Absolutely. I think, yeah, we've got let's do it. Class here. Let's go ahead and get started. Anyone else can um continue to join for sure as we get started. So, but hello and welcome to find what's your solution slide, where we will be getting deep into the strategy for making your best solution slides and why they're one of the most important slides in your deck. I'm Molly Yagan, which is one half of the Presentation Thinking podcast with my co-host Mikey Maduski, CEO and founder of Ghost Ranch Communications. We talk about presentations, we think about presentations and what separates the good from the great. We obsess over storytelling and who's doing it really well. Um, you can tune in on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you stream your podcast. You might have very well joined this webinar because of the podcast. Um, presentation thinking to give us a little more background, aside from having a cool name and a very provocative uh, depiction of Shakespeare here, uh, is a place for professionals to truly go down the storytelling rabbit hole in the hopes of uncovering lessons to level up one of the world's most sought after soft skills, which is the ability to sell an idea. So our team of visual storytellers over at Ghost Ranch is deep in the weeds every day, designing and developing presentations for amazing companies, amazing people. And we've realized that they don't just look pretty, they actually say something, right? And these world-class presenters that we see up on stages, they aren't just, you know, book smart, but they can rise to the occasion to truly deliver and move everyone in a room. So when Ghost Ranch realized how we could benefit from truly studying this in a more holistic way, we wanted to share those findings along the way. So that is truly what presentation thinking is. It's a ba balance of strategy, science, art, and delivery, those pillars you see up there. And it's really multidisciplinary. All these, all these topics you see on the left really lean on uh, each other and work with each other. And that's what we discuss on the podcast. And that is ultimately what's brought us to today, the Storyteller Study Club, where we have new topics monthly. Um, and this is an opportunity for us to put into practice what we've learned and what we pra practice what we preach, give presentations, as well as, as well as share knowledge for us to just learn from each other. So please, please feel free to throw questions in the Q&A box or the chat as we go along throughout today's presentation, because we always make sure we have time for Q&A. This is such a learning space. And yes, you will absolutely be getting a recording of today's presentation as well. Molly, what are we talking about next month? And yes, a quick plug, we'll do this again at the end, but we're going to be talking about architecture slides. So Wednesday, August 30th, mark your calendars. We always aim for the end of the month um, uh, on a monthly basis for these Storyteller Study Club Lunch and Learns. So um, next month is the deep dive into architecture slides. Today, uh, Lindsay... Galinda, as you know, we're talking about solution slides and the ranch's associate creative director, Lindsay Hadley, will be leading your way down the yellow brick road here. Uh, Lindsay is such a creative talent. She has 20 plus years experience in design, four years teaching advertising design and graphic design at SCAD, which is Savannah College of Art and Design. And for 10 years, she's been the design director for Pattern Magazine, a biannual fashion pu publication. So also for fun, she's also our resident color expert, always wearing bright colors, style icon, and tennis enthusiast. And so having seen and been a part of some really successful projects with amazing solution slides, very effective, we couldn't think of anyone else to head up this Lunch and Learn. So you're in very good hands. And without further ado, I will pass the talking torch and screen share over to... <laughs> Thank you very much, Molly. I don't know any better hype girl in the industry. That was a lot to live up to. Oh, my mercy. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, here we go. Well, <clears throat> our story begins not on the other side of the rainbow, but on the other side of the Mason Dixon today. Dun, 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 dun. That's right. It's at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, I've been the design fairy godmother at Ghost Ranch for five years. Uh, in another life, I received my master's degree at the Savannah College of Art and Design, eventually teaching there for a few years, long enough to meet some other members of the Ghost Ranch team and to develop a pretty hearty drawl. Um, I actually taught in this building. This is Petter Hall, if you ever get to go there. And I think, oh my gosh, those are two of my students wondering if I'm a good witch or a bad witch. And I will say that no one goes to art school hoping to major in presentation design, but that doesn't mean there's not a lot you can't do with style and craft and communication. Just think of it as a 1920 by 1080 canvas. 
So let's go on a little journey together. If it looks ominous, it's just me feeling anxious about giving a webinar. <laughs> but truly, it's a little scary to prepare a, a pitch deck. You need a good map and some solid direction. It's one of the things we're here to do today. Last month, Jeff Carter walked us through the best notions for crafting problem size in a pitch deck. And this may be a good time to level set on pitch deck. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard that term before, if you're just starting, a pitch deck is hoping to generate interest and excitement with investors about a company. And that can lead to another meeting and potential for an investment discussion. A pitch deck can be this critical tool in raising money for a business, but it's the only first step in a process. And it's common for a pitch deck to have these nine slides, a solution slide being, you know, one of the most important. Um, you know, in every journey, there can be some unplanned detours. It could be that your audience gets distracted or has an emergency. It could be that your power goes out. Uh, let's say you only get through a couple of minutes. Your solution slide should be up front. Grab their attention early. It's likely that your solution slide is used beyond your deck also. It could be in social posts and other marketing materials. So make sure you communicate it quickly up front. Um, you may have noticed uh, there's a bit of a Wizard of Oz theme for our problem and solution webinars, you know, kicking off with Toto this morning. The writers of the Wizard of Oz did an amazing job crafting some memorable lines like this one. And you've probably heard this one once or twice. Beyond being highly quotable, they are great examples of both Dorothy's problem and her solution. Now, I would wager to guess if the Good Witch had given Dorothy a well-crafted solution slide like this one, she would have made it to Kansas a heck of a lot sooner. Of course, it would have been a short film. But sometimes brevity is a beautiful thing. And that's why today I'm happy to offer five tips for solution slides. This is the chance to get people on board, to get more money to fund your thing. A great solution slide clearly communicates your benefits and demonstrates how you solve the problems laid out on the problem slide. So investors are usually looking for signs that you understand your customer's needs, that you value their input and that you can effectively solve the problems that they're facing. Nailing this solution slide may not guarantee that investors will invest, but it may help you communicate what you're trying to do as effectively as possible. This is a great practice for you. Uh, yeah, let's zoom in, Deli Elbrick Road. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple of notions, you know, this path to a great solution slide. The first one is deceptively simple but keep it short. You want less than 250 characters on this slide. There are some rules of thought that say that uh, you should go by the 10, 20, 30 plan, which is no more than 10 slides in your presentation, no longer than 20 minutes, and the text on your slide should be no smaller than 30 point, 10, 20, 30. When you use brevity, Make sure that the words that you are showcasing, that they're readable. You know, we're using Helvetica today. It's really readable. Everyone has it. Great colors. You can test to see if people who are colorblind can see your slides. You want those crucial words to be read. Make it eye-catching. We actually commissioned art for our presentation today. That's wonderful if you have the opportunity to do it, but it's not necessary. Sometimes Photos and illustrations can be distracting, especially if they're competing with your message. Just make sure that it just looks nice. It's not too cluttered. The visuals are good. They're high resolution. Uh, and focus on the benefits and opportunity over technical details and features. You just want to hone in on the benefit. Um, I'm going to mark out flying monkeys. There could be some problems. Just know that if you've got a demo to show, make sure you've got a backup in case it doesn't work. There could be some things that go wrong, um, some bullet points that get out of control. Just make sure that you focus in on these four things and you should be good to go. And I want to show you some good examples of a solution slide. Uh, this one is from a company called Spring Rose. It's a startup that we met as part of the Northwestern University Venture Cap Program. The founder had such strong problem and solution slides that it led to her winning funds from more than one pitch competition. Um, and if we 
check out the, the characteristics here. You know, we've got fewer than 250 characters. You know, imagine billboard, bumper sticker. Um, right away, you know that this is a bra company. You don't have to say bra. You can show a picture of it. Um, if you have a Mac, there is an apple on the outside. You don't have to show an apple and say an apple. That's a little C say. Um, so right away, we know the problem. There are millions of women in the country with upper mobility challenges. If you've got arthritis or nerve damage, it's going to be hard for you to put on a bra. Furthering that point, if you're bigger than a B cup, there are limited sizes. They are unattractive. Clear demonstration here. Unadaptive, limited size. So we know the problem. And let's check on our solution slide. It's short not too wordy, it's readable, it's eye-catching, and you see the benefits. We design adaptive, attractive bras, period. And that helps get their solution honed in. And they did such a good job of it that they utilized it in their social media campaign, which became another solution slide. Get dressed effortlessly, adaptive, attractive, and comfortable, using the same imagery. With only a sketch, almost a thousand strangers signed up for a wait list for these bras. So this is their money slide. You know, Emerald City, here you come. This did a great job. Problem, solution, connected to get investors. All right, now, poor Dorothy and her entourage were no match for those sleepy poppies. You may have been in a presentation before where your mind couldn't help but wander. And please don't let it be that presentation today. <laughs> Hoping that you're hanging in there with me. Um, when you throw a bunch of bullet points on a slide and run through them, you are guaranteeing that whatever you say will be quickly forgotten. And it's not because you're boring. It's because people can't read and listen at the same time. Tell me if you've been here in a class, in a presentation, you saw what's coming and you just wanted to leave your body in the room. Oh, my mercy. Here come the poppies. <laughs> so avoid bullet points if you can, um, but let's say you have them. You know, there are some ways to make it engaging still. You know, this is a wonderful solution slide. They've got wayfinding up here. You know, it's the solution. They have an example of their dashboard. What is the benefit? A little sub benefit. And here we go. Five bullets, but it's not a bullet point list. They've used iconography and brand colors. You know, it's shown the benefits and it's eye-catching and it's readable. This is a great example. If you are not a designer and you're like, where do I find affordable icons without commissioning someone? The Noun Project is a great place. Flat Icon is a wonderful resource. Um, you can find some icons in the same family that help with your bullet list. This is another great example from a company called NextKey. There are a lot of reasons why I love it. It's simple and a lot is happening on one slide, but it's not too busy. This is almost like the Wizard of Oz too. You've got Kansas over here and then you've got the rainbow, the full color. Um, one way to go would be to have multiple devices for a lot more money, or you could use their solution for a lot less money. And someone in the middle is telling you why it's so good. This is a great example not using a lot of words. And then um, I mentioned before that you don't necessarily have to have an image. They're using one of their uh, interfaces here, but I mean, this is just typography with a little bit of color. You don't have to go crazy. You don't need fancy imagery. You just need a succinct point. Thank you, Carbon Graph, for doing a great job. Um, okay, tip number three, the left, Sparkly shoe is no good without the right sparkly shoe. A good pitch deck solution slide should have a strong connection to the problem it laid out. Now, in theory, it sounds simple enough. Your company solves a problem that many people have. Great. But in practice, founders often jump right in to a grandiose solution or a vision statement that doesn't really align with the problem slide. Um, so kind of step back, the, the tie-in is important because it shows your customers that you understand the pain points um, and you have a solution. The problem slide sets the tone for the entire pitch deck narrative. 
Um, everything that comes after it should flow from it. This positions your startup as a much needed hero in an industry with unmet needs. Um, here we go. <laughs> the solution slide can only be as effective as the problem slide that is tied to. So they have to work cohesively together. Here we've got a Western problem that needs some water. What if you're showing more than one problem and a corresponding solution? Well, maybe those can even have a stylistic cohesion. The next real world example comes from Giant. Um, I love it because the wayfinding is wonderful in this deck. It could be that your audience is reviewing a deck on his or her own. So it's nice just to say, hey, by the way, this is the problem that we're telling you about. Patient journeys are filled with obstacles. Nice, succinct. I also like the brevity of color <laughs> that we've got a grayscale image with one pop of color. That is also a really nice method to use. Again, it's bullet points, but not bullet points. This is really engaging. It's showing someone using a product and what the pain points are. And then look at the solution. Another wayfinding moment. This is the solution. It all starts with your new digital assistant. She's so happy. And then we're, we're seeing them in real life here. I love in a PowerPoint presentation using that grid thumbnail setup because it gives you a chance to observe the visual rhythm. And again, you don't need a lot of bells and whistles. Just stand back and look at this. We've got uh, a very readable set of slides. It's eye-catching. You clearly see the benefits. And it's just, you know, a small group of text in a, in a box. You can do this. Here's another example that, you know, it's showing that the problem and solution slides are almost like a call and response. Again, we've got a customer. We're seeing her pain points. This is the problem. And the solution slide almost mirrors it, that we've got the problem bubbles, we've got the solution bubbles. Here's our hope and our vision. All right, we're going to click those heels a couple of times. Let's go back in time. Do you all remember 2008? <laughs> if you were in New York City and needed a ride, you might have gotten a taxi. And here are some problems with that. Um, you might be riding in a car that's getting 14 miles per gallon. So because some old technology with the car and the two-way communication is not a thing. If you are hailing it or called by phone, there is lots of fair seeking dead time. The elements of this slide is actually from the original Uber pitch. Um, so hail no, this is not a great system. So here's their solution. What Uber proposed in 2008 a one-click car service. Here are the benefits. It's for members only, so it's trusted. Not hailed from the street. Uh, guaranteed pickup. Check, check, check. You know, when I showed you the Emerald City, we talked about a money slide. This is a money slide. We all know how this turned out. Um, I'm going to give a moment here uh, to talk about Molly's Lunch and Learn from a couple months ago. She talked about basic plots. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you saw it and loved it, watch it again. Molly, you want to plug this, baby? <laughs> It'll probably be happening again, I think. Um, uh, yeah, just, just talking about the seven basic plots and how we can strategically use them in your decks. <laughs> yeah, we like that, you know, the resolution is your solution. So it's a great moment in your story journey. Thank you, Molly. Tell us when it's going to come. We'll be tuning in. All of our lunch and learns lean on each other. <laughs> all right, so uh, fourth tip is one of my favorites of all time. It works in any medium. It works for writing, uh, write and design with the delete button. Uh, solution slides, they are better if they're concise and powerful. Investors want to hear a concise story that gets straight to the point without wasting their time. They don't have time for boring stories and they want something that will capture their attention immediately. They're looking for innovative ideas that can change lives or businesses forever. So tell them that right away. This next slide comes from the New York Times and it is a diagram in PowerPoint of the American war strategy in Afghanistan. Holy mother, 
<laughs> um, investors, war planners, students, anyone, they see a lot of decks and they often stress the importance of brevity. Avoid overcrowding on this slide, on any slide, less is more in the world of pitch decks. And the reason is that um, investors in a, in a survey, they, <laughs> they found out that they only spend about two minutes and 43 seconds reading a deck. Uh, using the average words per minute reading speed of 15 of a 15 slide deck, that's like 66 words per slide. Um, so that doesn't apply just to copy, but you know, don't put too many visuals on the slide too. If you can still get the point across and delete some elements on the page, just keep on deleting things. A great solution slide has got to be quick and easy to understand. The faster an investor understands the solution, the better. This is an amazing example from Inferno Guard, another client we met through Northwestern University. Now here's a picture of a bootleg fire. And guess what? In this part of the world, one of those fires can go undetected for about seven days. Um, so what do you do? Well, if you got this device, you can know immediately if there was a fire happening there. You can't delete anything from the slide. You can read so much from this 1920 by 1080 space with minimal information. And there's a follow-up solution slide too. Um, our solution, look, big, beautiful photo in the environment where they work. Our solution, number one, assess the risk areas. Number two, put devices where there's the greatest risk. And number three, start monitoring it. This is such a beautiful example of designing with the delete button. I love this slide and Inferno Guard has continued to do well because investors get the point right away. It's the money slide. Um, okay, final tip. Don't be afraid to be a little dramatic. The wizard definitely wasn't afraid to have some drama. Of course, hyperbole, he was a little bit of a fraud. <laughs> but investors are looking for signs that you understand their customers' needs, that you value their input, and you can effectively solve the problems they're facing. One of our clients has a huge problem that they're dealing with. This is from their pitch deck, a company called Carbon Drop. It says, even if we stop emitting carbon dioxide without help, it would take hundreds of years to reduce CO2 levels. Okay, that's some drama there. It's a nice big photo. If we're doing our checklist, it's not very wordy. It's readable. Is it eye-catching? Yes. All right, so let's go to the next slide to see if the benefits check out. Okay, what they're saying is carbon drop aims to drop up to 100 gigatons of CO2 per year at a direct cost of $1 per metric ton using genetically engineered seaweed. Okay, and that means in this drama to hope area, that's enough to offset three times annual global emissions and turn back time on atmospheric CO2. Holy solution, that's a big deal. Um, now I'm the one who designed this deck, <laughs> so I'm gonna critique it more harshly. If I were to go back in time, I might enlarge the typography on these key points to really drag home the solution. I love that it's this clear moment from problem to solution, but make that huge. That's a big deal to turn back time on CO2. Really good, okay. so. We're going to make the best use of your time and reiterate some important points. Um, five ways to be a whiz at solution slides. You can feel a brand new day. Remember that your solution slides your money slide. So if you can cut down on the words and make it eye-catching, you may be able to use that slide in other marketing moments and tell your investors that you know what's going on. Uh, avoid bullet points if you can. If you're going to have bullets, make them eye-catching. Make sure you're tying the problem to the solution. Design and write with the delete button and have some drama in there. Just like make it really this moment where you can have your pulse quicken when somebody sees it. Like I really get what you're saying. Um, you can do this. You are ready to go to Kansas. <laughs> you have the ability to make these solution slides. If you aren't feeling confident, People at the Ghost Ranch are always willing to help you, and we can talk you through some of your, your pitch deck issues. Um, but at this time, we're happy to take some questions. This is uh, Jeff Carter. 
Dorothy, problem slide king. Um, I'm your Belinda for today with big pink poofy sleeves in a bubble. Um, yeah, you can get down the yellow brick road. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, with this perfect slide hanging up for a while because we love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we'd like to go ahead and open up question and answer. Um, um, so let's just check the chat first. Um, yeah, Jeff Thomas is asking, how do you reduce your solution message down to a really short and impactful and impactful sentiment? Easier said than done. Yeah, you just you keep on hitting the delete button. You know, it's it's almost one of those things when when you're making your pitch deck and you're writing those solution slides, sometimes you're too close to it. So it's not a bad idea to sit down with a buddy who's even in a different industry and say, this is what I'm trying to get across. Does that make sense? Um, try to say it in another way. See if you can tell some of the story with pictures instead of words. Um, Molly, you're, you're our resident writer. Do you have any suggestions for writing it more succinctly? Yeah, I just to add to that, um, similar to what you said, think about like the one key takeaway that you want the audience to remember from your presentation. And that should be a simple sentence, right? You should get, before you even start, right? That should get down to a simple sentence anyway. And if your uh, solution slide isn't connected to that, then how can it be more like right on the dot? Like if you are using a few words, use yeah. those exact words, like will save more money. Like so if maybe it's as simple as that or something, yeah. right? So if those are the words, then use them really strategically. Otherwise, as Lindsay says, there's amazing ways to illustrate and design it too. But if you're using words, keep it connected to that one key takeaway. Yeah, it's a very humbling thing. I mean, especially for someone who's, um, you know, it's the owner of the startup or someone who's uh, writing the content. And for people who are designing it, knowing that all of the work that you're putting into this deck, someone might remember 1% of it. So what is that 1%? And you can imagine it as a bumper sticker. That's kind of the best way. Yeah. I like the bumper sticker example. Yeah. Darcy says brevity is key. That's what, that's the bumper sticker we need, Lindsay, is brevity yeah. is key. <laughs> Delete key. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That's awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I also wonder, like, kind of on that note, Lindsay, how does someone know, like, um, when the slide is ready, especially for the folks that aren't like, I'm not, I don't have a graphic design background, you know, and like, how do I know that I'm like, okay, it's ready to ship. It's ready to be presented. Yeah. I think you have to step away from it for a little bit and, um, you know, do a light crowdsourcing, little focus group testing, making sure that what you want to get across, people are actually getting from it. Um, even showing something like a chart, are there ways to simplify what's on the chart or what is the one key metric that you want to reveal also? Yeah. <clears throat> totally, totally. Um, Robin is asking, any suggestions for implementing this awesome format when your company has a culture that you should be able to read a deck and get everything from the presentation without attending the meeting, right? Oh, so yeah. When all the information's stuffed in there and um, yeah. <laughs> no, that's an awesome question. Um, I don't think you're alone. Yeah, yeah. It kind of depends on if you can put stuff in the talk track too. You know, if there is you know, what if you had the bumper sticker slide and then a follow-up slide? So you can say, you know, if I were doing this and I could talk to it, this is what it would look like. But if this is a leave behind takeaway, here's the follow-up to that nice, juicy, beautiful solution slide. That might be one way to go. Yeah. And there's different decks and different slides that can be put into different audiences, right? So if this is just an internal thing, yeah. which not just, but um, it's a different style, right? There's different slides you can kind of throw in and the talk track that can be um, accompanied by um, that deck specifically. Grace, um, this was sent to just, just us and the panelists, but I want to throw this out because it's kind of similar. But how do you make something, you know, creative um, when brand guidelines are strict too, right? Oh, so if you yeah. want to kind of be a little more creative with your yeah. problem solution, how do you break out of that that kind of um, known format or that structure? I love this question. We have one client who's amazing and the brand guidelines, their primary colors are black and white. <laughs> and um, their, their font is a very ubiquitous sans serif. And it's one of the most bold brand guidelines I've ever seen. So let's say you've got the strict guideline, you get black and white to work with and a sans serif. I like to use the Grover near far technique then that you make some things just really large on the page and you can do some interesting things just 
uh, you know, make a giant statement. And then the follow-up might be black background with white letters that you can do a lot just with contrast and you're still staying within those guidelines. You're just playing with scale. That That's one thing for yeah. sure that I love playing with. Um, we, something we put on just maybe two months ago was presentation design for the non-designer workshop, um, hosted by the amazing technical director at the ranch, Steve Sheets. And we're definitely going to do that again, just including some ideas where, Hey, you don't need a graphic design background, but there's some really amazing and stark things you can do to just create yeah, with a split slide, high contrast, um, blowing up the font or having just like a really beautiful stock image and utilizing that the best way you can. Um, so there's ways you can use brand assets and be a little more creative and maybe push the envelope for your company a bit, maybe. <laughs> that's that's what we're here for. <laughs> um, I also, um, similar, similar to talking about like how we get your message really distilled down, Lindsay, um, I wonder like with data, right? Because a lot of times uh, companies, especially startups, might not have the data for yeah. what they need to show for a solution slide, um, especially trying to get money. So with data, how do you recommend including or proving that like your company, your product or service does offer a solution? Sure. So you can use projections. That's one way. Like, um, you know, based on <laughs> other industries, this is what we um, project something to be. Um, it could be looking at similar circumstances. So you could say, no, I mean, looking at the Uber example for one, like here was the problem, here's the solution. Ours is in a different industry, but the model is the same. So here's what we're thinking. Um, have you worked with anything like that too, Molly? Yeah, yeah. I think I think um, it's kind of hard because it doesn't always have to be, um, it doesn't always have to be uh, the exact what what the audience is looking for is your the um the benefits right and so it doesn't always have to be like the numbers because numbers don't really stick with people anyway so yeah. in some ways i think you can use that to an advantage with um i've seen that with like the startups from venture cat and yeah. so i think talking about the benefits and just really focusing over that so yeah spring rose was an example that we could reference also that um you know they didn't have any data but they had interest so they had, you know, almost a thousand people signing up for more information, which is a nice metric to show that th there's some interest here and we're just showing a sketch. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I think we've got time for one more. Uh, Missy threw this into the Q&A um, box, um, a little separate than the chat <laughs> Zoom setup. But if a client or writer refuses to shorten their solution text, do you find pitching a second time more brief solution slide is key? Yeah, I mean, it's hard because a lot of times we're working with subject matter experts, right? And they may not have backgrounds in art design or communications, but they know their stuff. So it could be even proposing an A-B test. You say, all right, let's try one version that we've got the whole spiel here. And then let's just try another version where it's like this and just see what works because, you know, different audiences may respond to different things. And it is nice. You could design a deck that has the shorter version and put the longer version in the appendix. So if they have a Q&A, like, I am so glad you're interested in this. Let's take a deeper dive. And then they can show this longer format. Totally. That, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Offering some um, different versions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no problem, Missy. All right. Any Anything else? We like to keep these just under an hour, so um, can take one more. Otherwise, let's plug the next Storyteller Study Club. Um, and that will be a deep dive on architecture slides, as I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation. And just to confirm, yep, that is going to be August 30th, a Wednesday, same time, same place, except a different link. Um, so stay tuned. If you signed up for this webinar, you will absolutely be getting um, information about the next one with um, the recording sent out soon. So um, thank you so much for joining everyone. We love we love uh, learning together and sharing our knowledge. And Lindsay, thank you for sharing your time.